Welcome to Sigmac, everybody. It is it's it's short for Sig Matheson. Yes, confirmed. B, I'm on a branded Sigmac color. Uh coming near coming co- <laughs> Peter. Good talk, good talk. We'll see you later, guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hey everybody. But anyway, do you like truly? Um, hard seltzers. I will drink it if it's there, but I'm not like a, I'm not like a huge fan of it or anything. Yes. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> Product of one of the okay, most intelligent okay. and industrious. Okay, whatever. Okay, no. I, I, okay. Listen, this is faster than a toaster. <laughs> Okay, this is way faster than a toaster. What do you want from me? Oh, that's fair. That's fair. You're way faster than a toaster. Oh my god. How is my honey made? Well, I'm glad you asked for me. Let's find out. Let's find These out. Creatures, whose miniature society is one of the most sophisticated in the animal kingdom, and its medicinal qualities have been known for centuries. <laughs> It all begins in a field where worker honeybees suck nectar from flower blossoms, such as clover. The queen bee lays up to 2,000 eggs per day, creating the workforce needed to feed and protect the colony. But the beekeeper tricks the colony's defenders. He replaces the hive's cover with a device called a bee escape, which smells like cherries. Bees dislike the scent, so most fly to the bottom sections of the hive. Another warning spray, and the beekeeper Hold removes up. the bee. Escape. Bees have noses. Now he can escape with yeah, the man. Bombs. I don't know that. I have no idea. Inside the honey factory, they put the honeycomb Ooh. frames on. Bro, have you ever had in a honeycomb? Like, have you actually yeah. ever had? Yeah. That shit's so good. Holy, so good. They have like they have uh restaurants here in vegas that have like it's all honeycomb they put honeycomb in everything and I, one of the best desserts i've ever had is a honeycomb ice cream sundae so fucking fire oh my god yeah oh this seals the wax around the honey inside that's how they do that oh this wax is edible The beeswax lining of the honeycomb goes to make candles, furniture polish, and lipsticks. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Don't you find it just so fascinating that these when little creatures just automatically make these they octagonal consume, shapes? They simply let it granulate. Yeah. Develop sugar crystals Nature, man. that turn hard and white. Sure. <laughs> then when orders come in, they return it to its original Nature, liquid form man. by heating yeah. it to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. One beehive can yield over three kilograms of honey in a single day. That's much more than the bees need for themselves. The surplus is what we end up eating. Oh, this is so fascinating. Honey production today is both efficient and humane. For centuries, the only way to harvest honey Do you hear that, vegans? It's to kill the safe and humane. In 1851, get over yourself. An American beekeeper invented a way get to get over yourself. Honey, Your lifestyle is wrong. Hold up, can we talk about something real quick? Sure. So a big, a big part of like veganism is, correct me if I'm wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong. I was a vegan for like a year, but I didn't learn much. It was just a health reason for me. It was purely personal. But then like a big reason a big part of veganism for a lot of people is like not only is it inhumane inhumane i'm not gonna stand by that but like inhumane and also it's bad for the environment right but i feel like insects to a certain degree if you farm insects as in like if you fuck i don't remember the word is but like if you harvest insects wouldn't that be fine like would that not deal with all the fucking things that are with if you eat insects wouldn't that solve a lot of problems for vegans i also had a stint as a vegan um and my other vegan friends at the time would get on my case for eating honey because they're like it's like oh you're one of those honey eating vegans and i'm like what is that supposed to mean apparently these vegans 
still value the lives of insects and they find it to be inhumane to use any of their byproducts. But at the same time, I'm not pitching like, you know, crush up a bunch of crickets and make it into protein by no means. I'm just saying like, I like honey. It's a product that is safe to extract from insects. Are you, are you saying that it's like the problems when you're saying problems of vegan, of veganism, are you referring to the protein issue that like every vegan has to face? Saying like, okay, that brings up a good point. Like they, they consider like insects and smaller animals that don't necessarily are not necessarily like they're not in the part of evolution where they're actually like developed enough to have feelings right like it's hurting their feelings mm -hmm. i guess here's the thing they did research uh they actually like legitimately did research on like different kinds of fish right and a lot of fish they're too like they're not evolved enough to actually have feelings so what I... is what is their background with that what is veganism how does veganism feel about that veganism is a lifestyle it is the lifestyle of which you are may are using you're trying to basically live your life at a net zero meaning that you're not over consuming you're not under consuming you're right at the net zero and they're saying the, the it gets down to like they don't want to be cruel they don't want to take anything from this earth that can't be just already it already replenishes itself which i say the whole the logic there's a hole in their logic there with bees because we like it's sustainable it's not cruel in any way like when you take it a step further as to the point where you're killing insects for their byproducts in the case of like you know like ooh, piece of candy i i don't think they're necessarily killing them for that but i'm saying that it's like because it's an animal bribe byproduct that you can only extract after um after their passing it's probably that is still cruel you know because something had to die in order to get it okay do you subscribe to that kind of philosophy no i don't i don't i think i don't okay. i still believe that there's no way for us human beings to live at a complete 100 percent net zero no matter what we do there's I agree there's always going to be either an overconsumption or an underconsumption there's not there's not really an area that we have figured out yet anyway for us to go at net zero vegans are trying i don't think that vegans could ever get on the boat of like using a, a insect insect byproducts for consumption use in any way okay yeah that's weird also it's like it's also the, about the conversation about like uh having your carbon footprint uh, footprint at net zero because that is also like virtually impossible for humans to be able to do so like to say that you want to live in like a net zero of like not over consuming and not under consuming true veganism would be to not exist yeah because like if you're consuming you're over consuming i agree i 100 percent agree yeah There's there's no that's ethical fucking tricky. That's tricky man. not even just under capitalism but just in general i don't think there's any such thing as as uh responsible consumption but here's the thing we could still try oh no 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 i'm, it's, I'm not saying you don't can, try yeah i'm not saying that yeah yeah 100 you could still fucking try it no no shade to vegans i'm just genuinely confused right now if you, if it's a lifestyle that you truly believe in you're not hurting anyone but as long as you're not like forcing it down people's throats then fucking go off all right let's learn how some cheese is made let's learn in the tiny town of cabot vermont already 100 percent. this is way better than the last video we've said just because she better. said <laughs> yeah. just because she spoke okay just get some money off of this fucking stupid video this creamery has been churning out dairy products for a hundred years their extra sharp cheddar nabbed first place in the 2019 u.s championship cheese contest hey other mild Ooh. and medium cheddars got first in the 2018 world championship for cheese oh, yep shit. such a competition exists and i want to be a judge so I how also does want to be a judge. Creamery make the world's tastiest cheddar cheese? Well, it all started here in Vermont on a family farm. 
My name's Clara, and I'm a third generation um, dairy farmer here at Fairmont. My husband tells me that he's eaten more cheese since he's met me than he ever did in his life before. <laughs> As part of the Cabot Cooperative, Clara's family knows exactly. Also, a side note: what what are you laughing about? No, just like that seemed like a weird thing to put in, and then just like nothing else. Yeah, it kind of was out of pocket. But I was gonna bring up. Yeah. What about this? Yeah. Is in is cruel to the cows? I don't know. I but think these... yeah. The, I've been seeing a lot of talk about that lately, like how you wouldn't drink someone else's like human milk, so why drink milk from an animal? Because cheese. Where their milk is going. It sucks some titties. And even what products it'll become. I would also Our suck milk some titties. Our becomes hard cheeses and butter. Clara's family has almost 1,500 Holstein cows at their two farms, Mac, one here in East Montpelier so and one titties. in Casbury, Vermont. We ship about 5 million gallons of milk a year. Fairmont milks their cows using a milking machine attached to the udders by a farmhand. The cows are being really well cared for and loved by family farmers, and that's really special. But some of Cabot's newest farm facilities are using robotic milkers to speed up the process. Okay, that. That right there, I feel, is that a little... Was weird, right? Yeah, yeah, that... That was weird, right? <laughs> when, uh, once, you, once you take it completely out of human hands and it's, it's just, a, it's just a, a thing standing there and it's just sucking your titties, like, I, I don't know about that. On average, in our inventory, we have close to 70 million pounds of cheese that we repeatedly will Dude, sample. Gina looks so With fucking ready for this. She's like, what are you talking <laughs> about? Evaluate. Let's just eat cheese, please. Dan, would you shut the fuck up? I want some cheese. <laughs> and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Look at she's oh, so is, so, finally makes it to the aging room. She's so so this is take this is Gina. Or a sample Dan, please shut block. the fuck up. Just let me eat some cheese. Those were her thoughts, dude. Oh my god. Good flavor. I, it's a good Monterey Jack. A little salty. <laughs> And Monterey Jack is typically. You know that she just loves her job. Yeah, I'd love the enthusiasm. Unique profile. As yeah. the cheddar gets older, um, the flavors that develop become more intense. Yeah, every batch tastes a little bit different. A thousand different farms. I mean, the mix is always going to be a little bit different. Cheese is a living organism. Graders like Gina and Ted determine when a cheese block is ready to be cut. The blocks head back. <laughs> I just realized I did my man with so much disrespect by referring to him as Dan. Like we all knew Gina. This is Theodore. Whose name is Theodore? The factory for the finishing yeah. touches. An industrial slicer breaks those. Also, Gina, no I would party with you. Eight ounce block. Fucking party. Then it's. I would party with Gina. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Those She's great. What if she just brings mad cheese, cheese to the party? Dude, flavors, people would love the fuck out of Gina. I love the fuck out of Gina already. Gina, fucking hit Peter's DMs. I want to party with you. Yeah, this is how I'll read. What? Excuse me? I want, all I said was I want to party with Gina. Oh, I thought you said I want to marry Gina. <laughs> I was like, um. Um. 